Good afternoon and hello ladies and gentlemen. This time we are the third reporter and we will report about the interlanguage theory. And today we have Miss Jezebel Apawan, Miss Jaya Francine Pogle, and yours truly to deliver the topic. So without any further ado, let's begin. So what is interlanguage? Is it something that we eat? Something that would make us ecstatic? Well, actually, interlanguage is a theory of how does a person learn a new language. But before we define that interlanguage, we need to learn its origin first. So the interlanguage theory is generally credited to Larry Selinker, an American professor of applied linguistics whose article interlanguage appeared in the 1972 issue of the journal International Review of Applied Linguistics in Language Teaching. So what is interlanguage? Imagine that there are two pieces of land separated by a narrow river. Let's imagine that you really wanted to cross the river, but you cannot jump, walk over, or even fly. So you decided to build a bridge. You pick up pieces of wood, stems from the trees, and pebbles and rocks for you to cross. Delighted with the second plan, you decided to build a home and a farm. Soon you add thick wooden planks that would allow your farm animals and other belongings to pass the river without getting wet. And soon you pour a concrete and make a road bridge for you to drive your car and cross the river back and forth. You made a bridge that is strong and sufficient enough to cross the river whenever you want. The land that you came from at first or on the left side of um, the picture is your native language. In our case, it's maybe Hiligaynon or Cebuano. Meanwhile, the land that is on the right side is a new language that you are trying to learn and conquer whether it is english native english french mandarin korean or japanese um, we will encounter the so-called interlanguage in learning a new one interlanguage is a linguistic system used by second language learners learners create this language when they attempt to communicate in the target language it is affected by the learner's native language as they use their native language knowledge to understand and organize the second language or to compensate for existing competency gaps. Nonetheless, interlanguage is entirely different from both the learner's first language or L1 and the targeted second language called L2. Interlanguage has its own rule system but it contains ungrammatical sentences and elements. Given that interlanguage consists of elements of L1 and L2, as well as the speaker's perceptions, it is always unique from speaker to speaker. Learners create rules and they are changed through input such as teachers, peers, etc. and of course sometimes by the learner. As I said earlier, Interlanguage is a system used by a person who is learning a new language called L1 as your native language and L2 is the new language. So in the interlanguage theory, there is a tendency that in learning a new language, learners usually create their own rules in the new language and it is called as an L3 or a combination of L1 and L2, whether it is on the accent, the phonology, syntax, and many others that may seem to be unique and different than those L2 native speaker who are speaking the language. So let's hear from Miss Jaya Francine Togle for the rules of this theory. Now let's discuss interlanguage rules. Learners' interlanguage changes with time. Interlanguage rules are not fixed. They are altered, deleted, or added. Interlanguage is systematic. Although different learners have different interlanguage, 
they all have their own rules within their variations. They may not align with the actual rules, but they are systematic. For example, I received money, I buy a new car, and I sell it. So this only shows that rules are set in predictable ways. The Continuum of Interlanguage Development from native language forms to target language forms includes three stages. First, Basila. It is the earliest form of target language development. Second, Misola. The intermediate stage of target language development. And lastly, Arcola. The final stage of the target language development. During second language acquisition, the learner formulates the hypothesis about the system rules of target language. The rules are viewed as mental grammars that construct the interlanguage system. These grammars are permeable. They are exposed to influences both from outside the learner and from the learner's internal processing. This suggests that the learner's performance is variable. These grammars are transitional. The learner changes his grammar from one time to another by adding rules deleting rules, and restructuring the whole system. Thus, in every stage of learning, there is an interlanguage. Through the gradual process of checking and rechecking hypothesis, the learner keeps changing his interlanguage until the target language system is fully acquired or shaped. This gradual progression naturally implies to an interlanguage continuum. The above figure suggests that interlanguage is a dynamic phenomenon which can be illustrated with a continuum of which one end is first language and the other end is second language. The learner constantly moves along the interlanguage continuum of which the destination is the complete mastery of the target language. Good day, my name is Jaya Francine E. Togland. I am your third reporter for this group, and my topic is all about interlanguage fossilization. So, interlanguage fossilization is defined as a stage during second language learning where mistakes seem to be impossible to correct despite the ability and motivation. It is a stage where the learner's development in acquiring second language has ceased to improve. So this usually happens because of the lack of correction, complacency of the learner, and inability to overcome fossilization itself. Such phenomena is when people learning second language keep taking rules from their native language and incorrectly applying them to the second language they are learning. So this results in a language system that is entirely different from both the person's native language and second language. So there are five fossilization process steps. The first one is overgeneralization. This involves the learners extending the application of a rule in second language. They group similar items together and try to predict their behavior based on a rule they already know. Using the same rule in situations leads to errors. So we have an example here. So let's say a learner already knows that when a noun is in its plural form, the rule is to add an S at the end of the word. So he or she already knows that the plural for dear is dears. However, we have, we have what we call irregular, irregular nouns, which has a different rule for its plural form. But since that the learner overgeneralizes the rule for, for regular nouns, the learner's plural form for, for an irregular noun, let's say woman, would be woman's instead of women. The same goes for verbs. The rule of adding an ed or d at the end of the word means it is in its past tense. So the learner will again apply this rule to every verb regardless whether it is regular or irregular. So the past tense for move is moved and the past tense for drive is drived instead of drove. So the second process steps that we have here is transfer training. Transfer training is applying knowledge and skills acquired during training to a targeted language. It consists of replicating structures from the learner's first language when they are speaking or writing something in a second language. Linguists agree that language transfer is used by language learners, especially when they are unsure about which structure to use in the second language. This is usually because of lack of instruction in English. 
So our example here is in Filipino, we have a sentence, Tumatakbo siya ng mabilis, which has the structure of verb, then noun, then adjective. Knowing this, the learner will apply the same structure in second language, resulting to running she fast, which is grammatically incorrect. So the third one here is language transfer. Language transfer involves learner, learners using knowledge of first language to understand or produce meaning in second language. If first language and second language are different, are very different, errors are likely to occur in second language, like I cats love. It occurs and either when speakers do not share the same language, need to communicate. It also occurs naturally in, in language learning programs when learners transfer elements from their mother tongue to second language. So there are two kinds of transfer training, the positive and negative. So positive language transfer. Positive transfer implies the mother tongue and the second language have similar structure and maybe vocabulary resulting in correct comprehension and language production, both written and spoken. And the other one is negative language transfer. Negative transfer is considered the transfer of elements and structure from the mother tongue to the target language in a way that diverges from the use of the target language by natives. In this case, language interference is most often discussed as a source of errors. Thank you so much. That will be all from me, your third reporter. Fourth is um, the strategies of second language learning. Fossilization is due to some approaches to the learning of L2 material that is being adopted by the learner. It involves incorrect learning strategies and fossilization of some features. It can include phonological, morphological, syntactic, lexical, psycholinguistic, or sociocultural. And lastly are the strategies of second language communication. In speaking, one must pay attention to the fluency rather than the accuracy in the information. When listening to the native speaker or the experts in speaking that new language, try to observe their structure and way of constructing words, the verbs, pronouns, adjectives, and many more, and take note of their fluency as they talk, talk, and not merely understanding what the speaker is trying to speak only. So, the learner tries to simplify the target language rules. Fossilization is due to some approaches used by the learner when communicating with L2 native speakers. Sometimes though, some learner's way of speaking can be fossilized because of their approach when communicating to the native speakers. Some learners have tight vocabulary or have no sufficient knowledge in constructing a perfect or a native English sentence, or maybe this learner has not been corrected by the native speakers or the expert and only tolerate what the beginner's type of speaking is. Interlanguage is by far the strongest contender amongst the second language learning theories. The theory of interlanguage was the first major attempt to explain the process of second language learning in terms of mentalist perspectives. After its introduction by Salinker, it has been gradually developed by the hands of numerous researchers. At this time, it has become much refined and also contributed a lot in developing many other theories. Although vague in many points, it has been able to provide significant suggestions for the theories of second language learning.